it, the title of the message is right from the scripture. It's when the Lord brought back our captivity, we were like those who dream. And Psalm 126, verses 1 to 6, when the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion, we were like those who dream. And then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with singing. Then they said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are glad. Verse 4, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. Those who sow in tears shall reap in joy. He who continuously goes forth weeping, bearing seed for sowing, shall doubtless come again with rejoicing, bringing his sheaves with him. Now this psalm has to do with the return of Israel from their 70-year captivity uh, in exile uh, in Babylon. Now we just spent 12 weeks gathering as a church fellowship because of being captive in our homes, resulting because of this COVID-19. We could only fellowship in our homes. And uh, I would be speaking from the pulpit here and giving you a message. And, uh, but we stay together. And that's what church families do. Amen? They say absence makes the heart grow fonder. And it's, I'm looking out here and I can see it, it's really true. Praise God. And we love you, Jess and I. And we've been holding the fort down uh, here. Of course, we live right next door. So let me get back to the word here. As this psalm said, it was like they, they were dreaming when they finally finished the 70-year captivity. Some of those were still alive that spent 70 years in captivity. Now, they were probably had to be 75, 80, 90 years old when they finally came back to Jerusalem. But I believe that they were dwelling on the promises of God, and, and they knew what the prophecies were all about. They knew that this was going to happen, and they lived to see the time when God will fulfill his promises. That's an encouragement to all of us. With all of the hell that seems to be breaking loose in the nation, be, 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 um, along with this pandemic, we have this anarchy that is breaking forth all over, and uh, the injustices that we've seen, that people are absolutely just, you know, they're going too far with it. Um, you know, they're, they're, they're looting and burning places down. This is just the devil's work. And what we need is, like I said before, there is a silent majority made up of all the races that we have in the United States of America. There is a silent majority called Americans that still exist. They don't necessarily get out there and shout and scream and yell and burn things down. But we will, I believe, be able to stand up and be able to get this thing back in order. I'm just believing that. And, uh, I, and we as Christians, we need to pray for the peace that surpasses all understanding to calm everything down. I believe in justice and for George Floyd that was murdered by that cop. I don't know what was going on in his mind, but it was pure evil. And we all agree on that. You know, everyone should agree on that. In fact, I haven't found anybody who disagreed with that, no matter what uh, race we're from or what, what color we're on or rich or poor. Everybody agrees on that. So, so why is everybody really freaking out so much about this? Well, of course, the protests are fine. But when they break into anarchy and they break into violence and break into looting and break the laws, you see, what happens is we want justice. But at the same time, if you want justice, then you have to also be an individual that's willing to live by laws too. So you can't take your laws into your own hands. Vigilante justice, okay, is kind of like it's an oxymoron in the sense that we want justice. So then you're going to go ahead and break the law? Well, then you don't want justice. You have to rethink things, you see. And again, you hear me say it all the time about uh, Dr. Martin Luther King. He wasn't a perfect man, but I followed his teachings. And I wasn't even a Christian, but the guy made sense. He made absolute sense. And if you were to compare the process that he did, and believe me, they, you want to talk about police brutality, you should have seen what they did to Dr. Martin Luther King and all the church people. And they were, they were black and white marching. And what they were marching for is justice. Go watch the videotapes. You will see they never held signs up. They never said one word of anger. They never did anything. 
And Martin, Dr. Martin Luther King was saying that we want to just see justice for all peoples that are Americans in this nation. That was his, um, his mantra. And believe it or not, he believed that violence just breeds more violence. Hatred just breeds more hatred. And what happens, he says, we either learn to live together as friends or we die together as fools. And uh, we see that there's too much foolishness going on. But I am believing that, that with the return of the churches, getting back into prayer and having our voice lifted up to God, that we're going to begin to see this captivity turned in America. We're going to see these things change in America because I believe that the silent majority, and it's not just white, it's not just black, it's everyone that is shocked about what's going on. But it's to the place where a lot of people are afraid to say anything without getting yelled at. The point is we have to start sitting down and letting people share what they feel and saying how can we resolve these issues in a peaceful manner as all Americans should be doing. We should route out injustices. Yes, we need to reform some things, maybe in the police department. But I'll tell you right now, the police in America today, if we have no police, if we have no police, and you think that you can go ahead and create a society that's going to be peaceful and loving, okay, you are living in a fantasy world, and it just proves that you know nothing about history. Because man is not basically good. He's not basically good. He has self-interest and selfishness in his heart. And the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. And that's why we need law. And that's why we need true justice. And that's why we need to be able to have someone to call. I mean, who are you going to call? Okay? You can't call just Ghostbusters when there's something going on. Okay? But you want to call a police force. But you want to also make sure that the police are doing things right. But the problem is, and I can't help but share this, I'm a researcher, so I am very slow to speak and I'm quick to hear. I want to find out facts and statistics and data from both sides <clears throat> and then try to, to come into some kind of a focus to say what is a rational, reasonable solution to these problems without getting emotional. Because emotions that are reigning and ruling in these riots are what's causing all the damage. And we, the church, needs to say, hey, if we're back now and we can get together again, we need to vocalize, but not in anger. And again, I keep quoting Dr. Martin Luther King because he had some great isms, I call them, to live by. And he said, you know, hatred will not conquer hatred. Only love can conquer hatred. And the problem, he knew that uh, nonviolent resistance was slow. It was really slow to bring reforms, but it brought lasting reforms for those individuals who practiced that. And he understood that violence just ends up causing innocent people to be killed while people who are trying to voice their opinion and their protest think that they're right. They don't care about the collateral damage. Well... But Dr. Martin Luther King cared about the collateral damage, and he was one of the individuals that, to some people, he was collateral damage because they did not believe in nonviolent resistance. I want to be peacemakers, and I feel that God wants our church to be that way. Don't get involved. Listen, I can be angry at times, and I don't want to be drawn into the negativity and drawn into the mud puddle of uh, just getting anger all the time. I had to shut it off, and I went before God. I said, God, I can't, I can't stand this anymore. He says, well, what are you watching it for? I said, because I want to know. He says, no, son, what do you know? You, you, you're just hearing two sides of the issues. They're never going to agree together. They're not. There's just two opposites going on. And in reality, if you look in the Bible, there's only two trains of thought that will grip human beings in the last days. Number one, it will be the spirit of Christ. And number two, the other group will be the spirit of Antichrist. And, and Antichrist means anything instead of Jesus Christ. So what you have is a war of two, <coughs> two, um, two spiritual beings, Christ and a fallen devil, okay, that are warring for the minds and the hearts of human beings. 
And there's a strong delusion over individuals that will not follow the scriptures. They will not receive a love for the truth. I love the truth. I mean, if I'm doing something wrong and you come to me and tell me I'm doing something wrong, I'm going to say, you know what? That's the truth. Why? I want to see. I want to see clearly. I want to judge with righteous judgment. I don't want to be judging with, with, with what I heard on the internet or, or seeing this. I want to be able to make sure that my yeses are yes and my noes are no. I want to be sure that I'm looking for truth. Just as the Apostle John said, I love it when I see my beloved children walking in truth. And truth is the opposite of lies. And what we have today is nothing but lies all over the place. And what we don't want to do as Christians is to go ahead and promulgate lies, even if they, they benefit Christianity, but they're a lie, okay? We don't want that. Why? Because the devil is the father of all lies. So, of course, as usual, I, had not, I didn't plan to say that, but, you know, I feel in my heart that um, where our nation is being ripped apart. And God said when I was praying, son, you can be a part of the solution or you can be a part of the problem. Choose a side. I want to be a part of the solution. So what I want to do is try to be what Jesus said, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Amen? And do the best I can and be as patient as I can with individuals <coughs> that have been blinded by the devil. I mean, it's the same philosophy I use and you should be using with your family members who have don't want anything to do with Jesus Christ. What do you do, scream and yell and argue with them? Where does that get you? Nothing. It doesn't get anywhere. But if you just calm down, and you pray, and when you can, open up a discussion. <clears throat> you just do what I do when I'm trying to witness to somebody. I'm pretending I'm fishing. I throw out some bait and see whether or not they're willing to discuss the issue. If they want to scream and yell and argue, you know. Emotions are insane if you haven't figured that out yet. There's no reason in emotions. Emotions are feelings. And the world is just running rampant with all kinds of feelings and the devil's laughing because he's got us human beings acting like wild animals. And if you want to see what, what mammals act like, just watch National Geographic. I watch it quite a bit and the Holy Ghost teaches me this is what man is without me. He's just an animal. He's just going to be a predator and he's going to dominate. He'll dominate the females. He'll dominate the weak until he loses strength, and then another male will come up and try to, to challenge him. I see it all the time. And God said, but man is different. Why, he's so dangerous. He's been made in my image and likeness, and he has an intelligence that is so far superior to every other mammal on the face of this earth. And he who sits in the heavens laughs when you think that a whale is, or an elephant is smarter than a male, uh, a, a, a man. It just doesn't work that way. Our intelligence is so great that no other animal in the face of this earth could unlock the atom and do what we did. So I choose to use the intelligence that God gave me to pursue truth in all things and try to win as many people as I can to truth as well as win them to Jesus Christ. So therefore, being able to know the scriptures is what we want to do. Amen? Well, we're meeting together as a church. It's like a dream. But now what do we do? Well, it's a time of celebration and faithfulness for the Lord who's been faithful to us. We want to be faithful to him. So we keep meeting together and we keep praying. But we don't get caught up in controversies today that make us angry. But you get what I'm saying? That's the flesh. That's the natural. And unfortunately, we live in a society now where it's not just physical strength. It could be guns. It could be weapons that could hurt and maim people. But we, the church, lives in this time and we need to find God's will right now. Now, I choose to be able to see God take us back from this captivity of mess that we're in, this pandemic, and all of this anger and hatred and strife. And as a student of history, I choose to live as a Christian. I choose to live with the character of Jesus Christ. I choose to be able to uphold the principles of love, peace, and gentleness, the fruit of the Spirit, which is something that every single person has to work at because we are working against the flesh because the Bible says that the Spirit wars against the flesh, which is human nature. 
and the flesh wars against the spirit. And that's what you see going on now. I want to finish up with this idea. In Psalm 126, verse 4, bring back our captivity, O Lord, as the streams in the south. And as I'm seeing this, I'm saying, you know, there's a double, there's a double fulfillment here. Number one, the churches are back together. And we want to do more than we did before, be able to, to promulgate the gospel, to get the gospel to go forth more, to be able to see our family and relatives saved, healed, and delivered by the power of the Holy Spirit. But they also, we've got a chaotic situation in our society where we need the church has got to get back to the, where we see streams in the desert once again in American society. Now, what this Bible was talking about here, the Jews that were brought to, back to Israel were thinking about the harvest that was going to come. Streams in the south were talking about the nourishment so that they could have wonderful, wonderful harvests again where they would be in control, where they wouldn't have to depend upon the government of Babylon to be able to provide their needs. But they would, by the work of their own hands, be able to, in, uh, be able to get their own crops and their own harvest. And that's the way it ought to be with all of us. Didn't work out too well. No, we're free. I said a lot more than I wanted to say. But you know me, I just speak from my heart. And you know how I wrestle sometimes with God. I say, Lord, if you want to speak, speak for me. But I, I want to speak truth. I want to love the truth. I want to walk in the truth as best I can. And I am far from a perfect man. But I know the struggle that goes inside of me goes inside of every other human being. That we have to wrestle with sin. We have to wrestle with temptations. But we also know that if we pray, we will not enter into temptations. The biggest temptation that I have right now, and you have, is to engage in frivolous wars with people who do not see. It's like trying to get somebody saved who's still blinded, but I can pray. I can pray, God, open their eyes, be merciful to them, and take opportunity of every time a door opens up for opportunity to be able to shed some light and some truth here and get people to engage in the world of ideas rather than the world of violence and revolution. But the world of ideas is where we can go ahead and win because we have the spirit of truth within us. Amen? Well, I want to see the kingdom. I want to see the kingdom. And Jesus said, if you're born again, you can see the kingdom of God. Unless you're born again, you can't even see the kingdom of God. You can't even understand the spiritual things of God, for they're spiritually discerned. So how do I do that? I read the Bible, and I do what the Bible says. And we've got to get the church in America, stop worshiping the experience of church fellowship and get them back so that they are filled with the scriptures, the New Testament scriptures. Because the Holy Spirit wrote them and the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. He will not anoint anything that is not in the word of God. And we can dupe as preachers all we want to and be nicey-nice and, and adopt this, what we used to have in Buddhism when I practiced that, where you love everything, including mosquitoes and bats and everything. Everything you don't like, you love everything. You don't kill anything. That's why I'm not a Buddhist anymore. Okay, I, could, I couldn't deal with mosquitoes and stuff, but you already know that. But the point is that this lovey-dovey nonsense that we do is doing nothing but yelling, there's peace and there's safety, and just love everyone, love everyone, while the whole America is on its way to a hell in a handbasket. They're on the highway to hell, and nobody wants to really tell the truth. But what we have to do is learn to speak the truth in love and grow up into all aspects, the Bible says, unto Jesus Christ. And then we will come to finally a unity of what we believe. But right now, by a unity of the Spirit, what Spirit? The Holy Spirit. And the only way we can do that is for we preach and stop trying to build big churches and try to build big hearts that are in love for Jesus Christ, that bring tears to people's eyes when they hear the Word of God spoken again, where the Holy Spirit can really grip the hearts of individuals. I don't know about you, but that's what I want. And I'm, I'm like you, okay? I'm not... I'm just living out the rest of my life, and I don't know how long I have left. My wife wants me to live another 25 th years, and, and I hope she's true. But the way I feel when I get up some days in the morning with the old arthritis, I'm telling you right now, I go, oh, God, you know, give me the strength. But I'm still here, and I'm strong in my spirit, amen? 
And I want my words to live on even when I'm gone from here. That's why I want to leave a legacy of the Word of God and not a legacy of just human Disneyland Christianity that preaches nothing but psychobabble to make people feel good but doesn't change anything in society and it doesn't change their hearts and it doesn't prepare for the things that are coming upon this earth today. But I know that when I see Jesus, I want him to be able to say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. The only way I'm going to do that is to do the will of God. Amen? Let's stand up and declare that. We'll have some time of fellowship, and then i got to go speak in another service. Praise God. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for today, Lord. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit. We thank you, O oh God, that you brought the church back together again. And Lord God, as the scripture says, hallelujah, we, Lord God, we want to see a harvest, Lord God. Now that we're back from captivity of being isolated in our homes, now, Lord, we want to go forth, hallelujah. We've been around this mountain of isolation long enough. We want to go forward, Lord Jesus, and we want to, Lord God, be able to preach the good news of Jesus Christ to every single person Lord God and be Lord God vessels of honor and vessels of truth vessels of the character of God and speaking the truth of God in love we're going to grow up into all aspects unto you Lord we want nothing but the truth so help us Jesus Lord God bless every family here and Lord God, we pray for those in our family that are, that are dealing with sicknesses and diseases. We come against these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, let the power of Jesus Christ touch their bodies. We say, be thou made whole in the name of Jesus Christ. If you're here now and sick, or if you are listening to this message, or if you have a loved one on your heart, we say, Jesus, move upon them with the power of the Holy Spirit. Outpour your Holy Spirit, we ask in Jesus' name. And the church hopefully agrees and says, Amen. God bless you all.